now we're going to continue with our slams. So the next one is uh, Maria Lix, who is going to tell us that nature is a source of innovation and inspiration. Looking forward to your talk. Hello, everyone. So it's hard to go after Mr. Science and all my colleagues, and also after the dinner. So I will try to make you exercise a bit by uh, going through a journey through the secrets of uh, biomimicry. And um, so biomimicry are the solution nature found for, millennium, for millennials and from which research can get inspired. Um, sorry. <laughs> so um, before that, I want to share with you a burning question for me. So we all heard about Darwin's evolution theory that only the fittest will survive. And then there's the jungle law. So I guess most of us have in mind that only the tallest, strongest, biggest, fastest, smartest survive, right? So how do you explain the sloth? It's also known as the lazy guy in other languages. It's certainly not fast and smart well. It doesn't stay awake long enough for us to assess. So how did it survive until now? The answer is energy efficiency and cooperation. So every time you will see this icon, I will say energy, and you reply back efficiency, OK? So let's try it. Energy. Cool, thank you very much. <laughs> I didn't expect so much uh, enthusiasm. <laughs> so how come energy efficiency uh, explains the survival of the sloths? It's very s uh, slow motion, and the color of its fur is the perfect camouflage in the canopy. It's very slow metabolism requires it to eat a very little amount of food, which means very little displacement. It only needs to go down the tree once a week to poop. Its fur is also the latest high-tech. It can collect water from the rain, and hence, inside this fur, green algae can develop that the sloth can eat directly from its back. And to grow, these algae need nutrients that they can get from the poop of a little butterfly coming visiting the sloth. And the larvae of the butterfly are feeding directly on the sloth's poop. Amazing, right? So Darwin is right. The sloth is perfectly fitting in this environment. Uh, but since, uh, because of this very slow metabolism, every energy loss would be a death threat for the sloth. And as energy is required in all of our actions, everything this loss does is done with the highest energy. <laughs> cool. So there are no waste, only resources being recycled, no unnecessary movement, only vital activities, eating and sleeping. Paradise, right? Please don't tell your boss I told you that this is the most energy efficient way of life, because of course it's not the most productive one. But hey, the sloth was still the first ever inventor and user of circular economy and short distribution channels. And as you might know, energy is a hot topic lately, so maybe this energy efficiency master still has some cool stuff to teach us. Like, for instance, what does the sloth drink? <laughs> Unfortunately, on that matter, the sloth is very loyal, loyal to its own reputation and it mainly relies on the water contained in the leaves and the fruits it eats. And I'm sorry to tell you, but we humans are not energy efficient enough to rely on such a small amount of water. And if we have a look at the water resources on Earth, we can see that most of it is salty water. So desalination appears as a relevant solution to water crisis, and this is where my work enters the game. And the link with the sloth, I think you got it, it's energy efficiency. Because to go from salty water to fresh water, energy is required. And just for, like for a car ride, several routes are possible. Some are cheaper than others. And we want to save money, or rather energy, because as you might know, fossil fuels are not the best for our environment, and they still represent 80% of our energy wallet. So that's why we would have loved to go down this last road, the most energy efficient road. But we already asked it. And it was like, nah, too tiring. So we have to find another guide to lead us to, towards this the most um, uh, highest energy efficiency road. Because for the moment, most of the users are taking 
the most energy consuming road because it's also the fastest. And just for like a lot of stuff, going fast most of the time requires a lot of energy. But if you already got stuck on the highway with almost an empty fuel tank, you know that there exists some ways to optimize the way you use the energy. Like in this case, what would you do? You can reduce the, the high accelerations and decelerations. You can reduce the speed, of course. But you can also make your car lighter by throwing through the windows the luggages or your co-pilot. <laughs> and this is exactly what we are trying to do here with water desalination. We will try to optimize the way the energy is used. So here we are on the side of the road, waiting for a guide to lead us towards this most energy efficient road. And there a salmon appears. Salmon? Okay. <laughs> so the salmon could be a good guide for us because it always travels from salty oceans to fresh rivers to salty oceans to fresh rivers. Its trick is that when in salty water, it drinks a lot and pee very little. And when in fresh water, it pees much more to balance the salt concentration in its body. Pretty smart, right? But do we really want to go down that road? I think we should wait a bit more for another guide. But ah, it starts to rain. Rain, isn't it the laziest way on Earth to get fresh water? Don't get me wrong, energy is still involved in this process. The sun is heating the water from the ocean. This water vapor rises. It reaches colder areas in the sky where it condensates, forms clouds. And when the clouds are too heavy, the water falls back on Earth as fresh water. This is a quite cool way to get fresh water, but it's quite long and very cumbersome. So our first step will be to reduce the size of, of this process by bringing the sky and the ocean closer together in a small device where the ocean is represented by a hot stream of water and the sky a cooled stream of water. They are both separated by an air compartment and a membrane. So now it's easier to carry, but it still requires quite some energy to heat the ocean and to cool down the sky. To heat the ocean, we can use the heat from the sun directly, but for the sky, we will need some help. So here we are, back on the road again with our new vehicle. And then we meet a black beetle. So the black beetle is living in the desert and it can condensate water directly from the air thanks to little bumps on its back that condensate the water. So if you ever tried to dry clothes in a closed room, you might know that if the air is saturated with humidity, your clothes will never dry. And it's exactly the same for us in our little device. If the air compartment is saturated with water vapor, desalination will stop because no more water can evaporate. So by enhancing the condensation thanks to these little bumps, we can make sure that the desalination process goes on and on. So we can make this little modification on our, on our vehicle and we can continue our path. And now some termites are crossing the road. And termites, they could also help us on this saturation issue because their nests are naturally ventilated thanks to openings of different heights and diameters, creating a natural circulation of air. And this could also help us to remove the vapor molecules at the water surface to make sure that new water molecules can evaporate. So we add this little trick to our vehicle and we continue driving until we, we can see a cactus on the side of the road in the sun. How come this cactus is not burning? Actually, it presents the smallest surface to the sun, so the smallest surface to heat, and it maximizes its lateral surface through which it can have the highest heat exchanges with the outside to cool down faster. Sorry. <laughs> um, so this would help us to reduce the energy consumption needed to cool down the sky in our device. So here we are with, with, li, li, sorry, with this last modification in our device. We reached fresh water with a new desalination device with a high energy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks to all of our friends. So next time you hear that song, please think about the sloths and all the others. 
Make it harder, make it better, do it faster, makes us stronger. The best is biomimicry and energy efficiency. <laughs>